friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and this is my corn snake noodles. You might be thinking, yawn, another corn snake video? Ugh, nothing new to see here. Boring. But wait, before you go and watch something more exciting, I'm going to talk about a unique quirk about corn snake biology that you might not even know about. Ever heard of a turbo corn? That sounds exciting. Yeah? Let's get started. controversial statement at all to say that corn snakes are quite possibly the best beginner reptile you can get. Although I have been researching a possible contender to that title in the Russian rat snake. I'll be talking about them soon-ish. Anyway, corn snakes care requirements are very easy to maintain. They are gentle, beautiful, and stay small enough to be manageable for everyone. Noodles here is a pretty average size. At a little under four feet long, she still has a tiny bit of growing to do, but she won't get too much bigger. Over five foot would be considered pretty darn big for a corn snake. But what if there's an anomaly? Would a corn snake say, 50% bigger than the average size be just as gentle and easy to handle? Or would such a beast have a big chip on their shoulder? Me metaphorically speaking, of course. Let's find out. This is Dozer, my giant corn snake. As you can see, there are some pretty obvious differences in appearance from noodles. He is anorethristic, meaning that he lacks all red pigment that gives most corn snakes their distinctive coloration. And he's big, just over six feet and one inch long. He's longer than the world's longest recorded corn snake, which is 72 inches. Now, I have read on forums with folks with dubious claims of seven or even eight foot corn snakes, which would be really incredible. But as far as actual recorded length, six foot is what we've got. I've mentioned this in some of my past videos, but before you get too excited for me and my record breaking snake, I should tell you that I think he is actually a hybrid of a corn snake and a bull snake, which is what gives him his extraordinary size, along with some other minor physical differences. Hybrids are not uncommon. Many species in the same genus can crossbreed. These are called interspecific hybrids. Inter meaning between and specific relating to species. Between species. Get it? This happens in the wild occasionally, but it's usually us humans playing matchmakers. Starter snake hybrids are fairly common in the reptile hobby. Super balls, which is a ball python and a blood python, those hybrids can be found relatively easily. There's a bunch of other ones too. I even know of someone who produced a Woma python and a ball python hybrid. It's gorgeous. Even though it is relatively common, hybridization is a controversial topic in the reptile community. I'm not making any commentary here about it being good or bad. I'm just explaining that it's a thing. So animals of the same genus can often hybridize pretty easily, but intergeneric hybrids, hybridization of animals from a different genus are a different story and are far less likely to occur. Either the two species have different numbers of chromosomes or the genes for different things aren't in the same place and they just don't match up. This is why say a coyote and a fox can't breed. I know, I know. Your uncle's neighbor out in the country swears up and down that he saw a koi fox in a ditch while he was driving down the road at 80 kilometers an hour at night. But trust me, he didn't. There is no such thing. Coyotes are canids, foxes are vulpids. They have different numbers of chromosomes. They cannot breed. This is also why I could not breed my bow imperator to my ball python. One of those species lays eggs and the other gives birth to live young. How would that even work? In rare cases where successful hybridization across genera can occur, the offspring is usually sterile. The chromosomes line up well enough to successfully make an animal, but does not include the creation of the necessary sex cells. They require a different biological process. Mules and hinnies are a good example. They are the offspring of a horse and a donkey. Ligers are another one. 
What's a liger? It's pretty much my favorite animal. It's like a lion and a tiger mixed. Bread for its skills and magic. Hmm. So, back to Dozer here. Corn snakes are a species of rat snake that belong to the genus Pantherophus. Bull snakes are a species of gopher snake of the genus Pityophus. Two different genera. So, Dozer here must be a miracle baby. Right? Not so fast. Not only can corn snakes easily interbreed with other species of rat snakes in the Pantherophus genus, they are also able to hybridize with Lampropeltis, king snakes and milk snakes, as well as Pituophis, like gopher and bull snake. It's even been reported that they can hybridize with Asian rat snakes on the other side of the planet, like Japanese, Korean, and beauty rat snakes. And the offspring of these pairings are completely fertile. In fact, the gene that goes into the popular tessera corn snake morph is actually thought to have originated from California king snakes. Neat, eh? If you think Dozer is as awesome as I do, or if you learned something new today, please hit that like button. It really helps on my channel and it tells YouTube that more people really should meet Dozer here and his other scaly friends. Go on, it's, it's right there. Nope. Thanks. Alright, back to Dozer. Dozer was sold to us as an adult corn snake that was surrendered to a pet store, so I really have no information on his lineage. My belief that he is a hybrid is based on his size, some other physical clues, and the fact that he is extremely talkative, something bull snakes are known for and corn snakes are not. Again, I'm not taking a position on whether hybridization is a good or a bad thing, but I will say that corn snake's ability to crossbreed this way is pretty cool. While I couldn't find a whole lot of information explaining exactly why these genera in particular are able to interbreed so well, if anyone can provide me some references or just explain it, I'd love for you to put that in the comments below. But what I did find instead were some awesome names that people have come up with for these hybrids. Let me give you some examples. Let's start off easy with a fox corn, which is a corn snake and a fox snake. Makes sense. How about a beast corn? Huh? Corn snake and a black rat snake. That sounds pretty rad. There are creamsicle corns, which is a corn snake and a great plains rat snake. Then you've got a jungle corn, corn snake and a California king snake. Neither species lives in the jungle, but you know, jungle corn. Okay, I'm gonna admit I might be a bit biased about this one, but turbo corn is probably one of my favorites. That is a hybrid of a corn snake and a bull snake or gopher snake. Possibly my buddy knows are here. Then there's Puebla corn, which is a Pueblan milk snake and a corn snake. And lastly, I love this one too, a corn durin, which is a mix between a Honduran milk snake and a corn snake. How cool is that? Okay, so we've covered the hybrid stuff. Getting back to the original question of whether an oversized corn snake is still a manageable beginner pet. Well, even though he might not be 100% corn snake, aside from being a little bit more talkative than most corns, his behavior is very corn snake-like. And as big as he is, you can see that he is just as gentle and easy to handle as noodles. So yeah. Even the biggest, giantest corn snakes are still awesome beginner pet snakes. And they're such sweethearts. I mean, look at this little guy. So, what do you think? Even though his parentage is a bit of a mystery, would you hang out with a giant corn snake like Dozer here? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye! This did you see that catch? You know what his belly makes me think of? What's that? What was that place with the tin roof that in, in Virginia, um, where we if you stood outside for too long you would get burned because the tin on the roof would reflect it? The silver diner. That's it! His belly yes. reminds me of the silver diner. Like or, a 1950s diner. Yeah, or um remember that place? Shake and steak, steak and shake. Oh, in Indiana. Yeah, that place. Yeah. The checkered. Yeah. Yeah. They give you the paper hats. Yeah, they did. They did. If they anyone's did. from there, then let me know if you've eaten there. This is the first video we're filming without me having braces. I know. Very exciting.
Thanks for that. <laughs> this should just be the thumbnail. <laughs> there, gentle, beautiful. Oscar, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't possibly be making that much noise. <laughs> yes, he can. I had to take my retainer out to film because I talk different. Yeah, like a toddler. <sighs> what is that? It's a pen cap. Of course it is. Don't chew the pen cap. Oscar. Come here. Yeah, I love you. Come on now. There we go. Good boy. Oh, dear, dear. Sometimes it glitches. Uh, sometimes you glitch. I've seen it happen. Yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> More than it's healthy, but it will be fine. It's fine. He conquered the maze. Okay, of up and down. Shh. No judging. He's got. A simpler brain. 